Hey everybody, this is Gregory from DAP University. So we're talking about how to write Ethereum smart contracts for the Solidity programming language today for the blockchain. And we're gonna be talking about how to write multiple smart contracts that talk to one another and also how to use inheritance with the Solidity programming language. So before we do that, be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and click the like button down below. That really helps these videos get found so that more people can learn how to build blockchain technology. I'll go ahead and use the smart contract that we were working on in the last video as the basis for this one. Um, so in this video, we're going to be talking about how to use multiple smart contracts in the Solidity programming language. Um, you know, two different Ethereum smart contracts, one that will talk to the other. And I'll also show you how to like write, uh, you know, parent-child relationships with smart contracts. So we'll have, uh, we'll talk about inheritance, you know, a, uh, a contract that inherits from another one. So I'm going to go ahead and clear out some of this code uh, from the last video to kind of get it where we want it to be. The first thing I'll do is, um, let's see here. We'll, we'll, basically what we'll do is we'll, we'll go ahead with this scenario where we're still going to buy a token, but instead of you know keeping track of the balance inside this smart contract, uh, we'll actually move it to a token contract uh, to you know kind of separate concerns a little bit. So actually, tell you what, let's go ahead and create the token smart contract like this. And again, this is going to be a really just basic, uh, you know, it's kind of almost like pseudocode example. It's not going to be a full ERC-20 token, but this will just give you an idea of like what's going to happen when, you know, two smart contracts call one another at a very simple example. So we'll say contract uh, ERC-20 token. And again, if you want to see more, you know, videos about ERC-20 tokens, I've got plenty on my channel. So I say string name. So we're gonna just have a state variable that keeps track of the name here. Let's actually make this uh, public. And we'll do a mapping. We'll just basically move this uh, balances mapping up here. We'll take it out of this contract. And we're going to um, extract this balances uh, you know, increment here and put it into its own function. So we'll just call this function uh, mint, Let's say function uh, mint, we'll make this public. And inside of here, we're just gonna do this. We'll take this balances uh, and increment it here, just like that. And also we can rewrite this just to say plus plus, which will increment by one. Refactor that a little bit, make it a little nicer, a little cleaner, all right. And now we should be able to clean up this a little bit, take these comments out. Let's see here. Let's actually simplify this. We'll take this purchase event out. We don't need all this. Um, that was mostly to show you how events worked in the last video. I just wanna simplify the code a little bit so that it's easier to follow along with. All right. So inside of here, uh, we want to mint tokens uh, inside of this contract. So you want to call the ERC20 token from this uh, buy token function. So how do we do that? Well, you know, we created this smart contract in the same file. So because this is in the same file, uh, this contract knows that this contract is here uh, before we compile it and deploy it. So in the source code, you know, uh, this one will know about this one. So we can basically uh, be explicit and tell this contract that we want to mint tokens in this contract. So in order to do that, there's a couple things that we need. We need to know the address of this contract once it's deployed um, because you know this will get deployed and then this will get deployed and we'll have two separate addresses and then my contract needs to know about the ERC20 co token contract where it is and then we'll basically just reference that smart contract with the address um, and we'll you know, basically get an instance of it kind of and then we'll just call the mint function on it, all right? So there's a two-step process. The first is we need this contract's address and then we need to instantiate this contract and then I guess really the third step is we call the mint function. So first we'll get um, access to this token address. We'll just say address uh, token, all right? We'll make that public. Uh, so we'll just say token is equal to token that we pass in and we will uh, keep track of it here, say address token, 
All right, we can also make this public if we wanted to. So now that we have the address, we need to uh, basically get a uh, instance of it. So we can do that like this. Like I said, this contract source code knows about this ERC20 token here. So basically what I'll do is say, uh, I'll create a new one. So I can say ERC20 token. All right, and we're gonna basically instantiate it. Um, and we do that by passing in the token address that we've kept track of here. So it can be explicit, which I think solidity 0 0.5 requires us to be explicit. So I'll say address and I'll say token. All right, so that will uh, reference this ERC20 token that's actually deployed. It knows about this source code and then it's gonna get the deployed token from the blockchain like this. And now we can use this token to call the mint function. So I'll show you a couple ways of doing this. The first one is we can store this to a variable like this. You know, when we create variables in Solidity, we, you know, or whenever we declare them, we must uh, specify the type first. So the type is going to be ERC20 token contract. And uh, this is a local variable. It's not a state variable. So I'm going to prepend it with an underscore, just kind of a convention. Token. It's not necessary for Solidity, but um, I do this a lot. You'll see this, you know, all over the place. And now we can mint the token like this. We just say token dot mint. All right. So now we can call this buy token function from this smart contract, and it will, uh, you know, use this. You'll call the mint function to from this smart contract. So let's check it out. All right, we'll run it. So first we have to deploy this in two steps since there's two smart contracts in this file. We'll deploy the ERC20 token contract first. We'll deploy it. Oh, sorry. I'm actually going to uh, use the JavaScript VM. We'll deploy it. All right. And now we can just copy the address of the smart contract that was deployed down here um, from the transaction receipt. We'll say contract address. And then now we'll go to my contract and deploy it. So it's asking for a wallet and a token address. I'll just paste in the token address, the second argument. And the first argument, I'll just get the wallet. So I'll just copy the, uh, basically the, the second account from here. So we'll do this account, all right, and deploy. Okay, and now we'll call the buy token function. Boom. You can also see the token address here. And now we'll say, uh, we'll take the balance of our current address that we're connected with to see if it worked. All right, so why is that? Why is it zero? Well, I'll show you why. Well, first, this was successful. The buy tokens function worked. It actually did call the mint function here, um, but it's confusing because our uh, you know balance from the account that we did it with is wrong. So I'll show you what's right. All right. So let's go. Let's. I'm gonna let you guess as to why this might be wrong. Well, instead of leaving a suspense, it's got to do with MSG dot sender here. Okay. So this can be a real gotcha when you're programming in Solidity. And you want to call, you know, a smart contract function from another smart contract. So earlier, when we built this, we call this mint function directly. Like if we go here and click mint, right? And now I click balance, it goes up by one. But if we do it from here, you know, we can click it again. Buy token. Let me see it's working. Uh, but our balance doesn't increase at all. But if I do mint here, it does increase. That's because msg.sender in this case is the address of the contract that called the function, not who sent it, okay? Now that's kind of tricky. So we can actually get the address of the person who sent the initial transaction. Instead of msg.sender, we also have access to tx.origin, all right? And that will actually mint functions for whoever initiate you know initiate this transaction so if we call mint function directly on the smart contract it'll increment our balance 
Uh, and if we call it from the smart contract, it'll also increment the balance of the person who called this buy token function. So that's a real gotcha when you're you know, programming with multiple smart contracts in Solidity that I wanted you to know about. Now I'll show you how this works. So I'll deploy the token first, we'll deploy it. All right, and I'm going to uh, deploy you know, my contract next. Say my contract, and we'll paste in the address. Okay, it'll be the uh, wallet address, and we'll also paste in the um, smart contract address, like this. All right, we'll deploy it. Now, let's uh, try to buy tokens again. We'll do a buy token. All right, it worked. So now let's go look at balances of uh, this account we're connected to, you know, account 33C. This is account uh, 33C, we'll do balance, and it's one. And if we mint tokens here as well, it also increases. So that's how TX Origin works. Um, you know, it's different from msg.sender. It's always the person who originated the, the transaction, even if a smart contract is calling the function. So I wanted y'all to know that because it definitely can be a gotcha whenever you are programming smart contracts that talk to one another. All right. So I'll show you one other thing before we move on. Uh, there's a shorthand here. So whenever we mint this token, we can uh, do this. We, can, we don't have to store this token as a variable. We can just say ERC20 token and then just call the mint function on it directly like this. And that would be the exact same thing. So I don't wanna walk you through all that, but I just wanted to show you that that's uh, also a nice, clean, shorthand, valid way of writing this in one line instead of two. Okay, so now I do wanna talk about the next topic, which is how to inherit smart contracts. So inheritance, so having a, a parent and a child relationship. Now we'll create a token that inherits from this basic you know, ERC20 token um, to do two things. So we'll keep this functionality the same. Um, and what we'll do is basically give out, you know, give this token, you know, the second token down here, um, we'll give it its own characteristics. So we'll give it its own name. And we'll also override some of the minting functions to, you know, wire up some of our own behavior in our own sort of pseudo token that we're going to create. So I'll say my token. All right, so that's what this will be. And this mile token will uh, inherit from this one. And we do basic inheritance just like this. We just say is ERC20 token. So let's customize this token. I mean, the first thing we could do is basically override the name. We could say string a public name. We could set it to something you know default like my token, right? And that would uh, technically override this, right? That'd be basic inheritance because if we define it a second time, uh, it would override whatever's in this parent class or parent contract. And that shows you how that works, but it doesn't really give us a whole lot of extra functionality. So let's show you how this works in a different way. So I'll set the name inside this parent contract like this. Let's say constructor, uh, let's say string memory name, let's say public. And I'll say name equals name, right? So basically we'll just have a constructor function that's run when this contract is deployed. And we'll take a name and we'll set it to this state variable here. So we can actually override this whenever we deploy our own smart contract like this. We can say, instead of just storing, having the hard value, we can also inherit that. Uh, we do like this, constructor, string, memory, uh, let's see, name, and I can say ERC20 token name, and that'll pass the name in from this constructor along to uh, this, all right? And let's we'll just say public. Let's say we also wanted our token to have a symbol. We'll just say string memory, oops, a symbol. Okay, and we'll just say symbol equals to symbol. And we'll say string public symbol. All right, 
So that's a way for us to accept our own, you know, argument into our own constructor, but still take constructor parameters from the parent contract. And I'm going to break this up like this to make it a little easier to read. I do this a lot in my, you know, production smart contracts. I break up the lines like this so it's easier to read. All right. So that's how you, you know, override constructors like that. Now inside of here, let's override this mint function as well, okay? Let's basically add some extra behavior. We wanna preserve this mint function, we still wanna keep track of the balance, but we also want to just do some extra stuff. Let's keep track of the people who actually own the tokens. So first we'll say, I'll keep an array of owners. We'll say address, this will be an array of addresses, say public owners, all right? And then we'll say, we'll keep a counter cache of the people who own the token. So say uint256 owner count. All right. And now we will update these values in our own mint function. So we're going to create a mint function that uh, basically preserves the functionality of this, but adds some additional behavior. So we say that is going to be function... Uh, mint, so we're going to override it, say public, okay. So first thing we want to do is call this mint function so that this, you know, behavior is uh, preserved. We just say super mint, all right. And now we say owner count plus plus. We say owners push msg.sender, okay. And that is basically going to um, call the mint function, the parent contract, to uh, update the balances. Then it'll increment the number of people who own the token right here, and it will um, add them to the array of owners. Okay, all right. So now let's just compile it and run it. And so when we do this, we don't have to deploy two smart contracts. All we have to do is deploy this one. So you can say ERC20 token, uh, let's see the string. Actually, let's do this. Let's do my token. So string name will be my token and symbol will be MTK, deploy. All right, so let's call the mint function. All right, it worked. So let's see the balances of the current um, current address that we're connected with we'll say balances this okay all right we'll do the uh, name my token and the owners of the first person in the list is our address and the symbol okay all right and we could also make this public if you want to read the owner count all right, guys, so that's how you inherit smart contracts in Solidity. Hope you all enjoyed this video. Um, be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, and click the like button down below. That really helps these videos get found so that more people can learn how to build blockchain technology. Until next time, thanks for watching DAP University.